Good morning. All right. Oh, no. What? Talk to people. Talking to people. What's up? What's Will you grab my water, please? Leotis. Good morning. Good morning, Facebook. Okay, check, check. Hello, there's nobody on Instagram yet. I don't know why. Maybe the thing is slow or something. Why do you have to tell everybody? Good morning, Brittany. Uh, okay, stool, please. Stootle. Pleadles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. We should have told people we were going live. That would have been helpful. Good morning, guys. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. You ready? Hold on. Instagram's not working? Hmm. Thank you for telling us. Maybe we will just end well, it and start. Yeah, over. end it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. End live video. End live video. Okay, one second. What do I do? No? No. no. My only option is to share. Oh. <clears throat> Good okay, idea. now we will try. Okay. Let us know if that is working. Thank you for letting us know it wasn't. Why are you dancing? <clears throat> Why not? Check, check, check. Hello and welcome. My mic sounds Hello. lower, but don't think it is. Hello, check, check, check. <clears throat> good morning, good morning. Are you ready to record? Good morning. Hello, hello, check hello. Check a little bit louder on your end. Hello, check, good morning. Okay, okay. <clears throat> good morning. Thank you, Brad, for telling us it wasn't working, because now it's working. Yeah, very helpful. Okay, okay, what do you want to do? What do you mean? Just dive right in. Okay. Right in. Got it. <clears throat> Are you ready? Mm -hmm. or, or what's up? I'm going to try to do a tagline for the podcast. Go ahead. I have to read it when I say it. All right. Okay. And we're going to have a little tagline challenge Ooh, at the okay. end here. Okay. Are you ready? I'm excited. Okay. Good yeah. morning, everyone. Hello, and welcome to the Anatomy of Marriage podcast. My name is Melanie Studley. Good morning. My name is Seth. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, and today is day 25 of the 100 days of AUM question and answers. And our podcast is a show that is not boring and it helps you have relationships that don't suck. It's a tagline. All right. <laughs> um, we, if you're Gladly. new here, welcome. We have over 200 episodes about all sorts of different marriage and relationship topics. So go check those out. Um, they're awesome and they're very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. We do four things every day. We read a review of the day. We do a gratitude and something else, and then we answer questions, but mm -hmm. I forgot we're not gonna do those today. We're, we're gonna we're trying to change up our formats very hard. So let's yeah. jump into the review of the day. You wanna read it? No, because we aren't done yet. This show is brought to you by audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. We're reading books every single day. We want you to as well. Audio and books. We want you to have an audio book free on us. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage. Okay, okay, let's read the read of the day. All right, it says, I used to love this podcast, Ooh. and I still do. My <laughs> wife and I have find ourselves recommending this podcast to friends more than we talk about our own podcast. Whether single, married, separated, I believe everyone can benefit from looking at relationships more in intentionally, and the tools Seth and Melanie equip listeners with are beneficial in any relationship. I love the daily live show. It's a great way to start my mornings and to be mindful in the ways I interact with my wife and become increasingly aware of potential pitfalls to avoid. Keep up the good work. And this was from Josh Mozug. Thank you so much for your five star review. It's Thanks. so awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Go and check out his title. podcast as well. I believe it's Let God Die. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. Thank you for that review. And let's just dive right into the questions. All right. Here I will read <clears> the <throat> question. Oh. Okay. How have you seen routines shape your marriage and shape your life differently? I am trying to implement some daily rhythms like yoga, reading, running, or walking outside. But some days feel harder than others. I've been reading Mel Robbins' book. You recommended Five Second Rule. Awesome. Hopefully you got it on autotrial.com. And it's been helping me. You did not put my phone on. Do not. Don't bust me. Ugh. Okay. To I hope Facebook is still working. That's to very our awesome listeners question. Uh, let's see. But some days feel harder than others. Yes. 
that is going to be a perpetual thing that always happens and will never stop. Mm -hmm. When you are trying to do something different, it's always easier on some days. It's always more difficult on some days, and that is part of it. The only way out is through. The only way to something new is through, and I want to give you encouragement to understand that at the, the top. So I find it helpful, and I've been working on tweaking a routine for a couple of years to be honest with you I find it most helpful that my current routine is wake up early uh, do a gratitude journal do the uh, um, the high performance planner journal plan out my day and then drink water go to the gym come back drink more water do this and plan stuff out just plan it this is what I'm gonna do this is what I'm looking for all day that's routine mm -hmm. I say one of the things that's been really helpful because you the first thing you said is <clears throat> how have you seen routines shape your marriage and shape your life differently routines have changed us as humans mm -hmm. completely so I think the first time I started really doing a routine was when I found the miracle morning by Hal Elrod. Hal, Hal Elrod book and I don't even know if I listened to the book but I heard him on a podcast or something so I started doing the miracle mornings and it's like gratitude journaling how you envision your day uh, other things like affirmation yeah there's there's reading mm -hmm. there's writing and, and it's extensive exercise. it's well known like you can just google <clears throat> miracle morning Hal Elrod and you'll find that mm -hmm. but when I started doing that it was super hard to figure out because it was just I wasn't used to it the only way that I can sustain a routine is that the uh, the best way that I can sustain a routine, not the only way, but what I find the most successful for me is early morning and then late at night. So for example, I really despise working out in the morning. I don't like how it makes me feel. I just feel terrible for the rest of the day for some reason. I love, however, working out at night. I love working out like right before bed for some reason. And I can build that into our routine because our kids can do it with us. So we actually have a gym in our apartment that's awesome and it's open 24 hours a day with a little like fob thing you get. So I go down there with the kids and we just exercise. Like mm -hmm. you can't even do that at a normal gym. And it is so fun, but I only do it in the evening, nighttime mm -hmm. hours. Um, but I get up at like five every day mm -hmm. and for probably an hour, you know, I make coffee. I do my uh, high, ex high performance planner from Brendan Burchard. You can read, he also has a book, High Performance Habits on Audible. You can get that. But so I, I do my stuff early morning, late at night, and I schedule out my day in my high performance planner for things I need to get done. I also take a lot like sticky notes at the yin yang. Mm -hmm. I make sticky notes to help myself. I'll put sticky notes on the cabinets that are like, Drink a freaking smoothie. Don't eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? Mm -hmm. So habits, you got to figure out what works for you, and it's a process, but make it positive. Like, um, yes, because there are going to be days where you're like, this is the last thing I want to do, but um, make it positive. Include things that really bring you joy into your habits. Like if you love to rock out to, let's say, I don't know, the Trolls soundtrack, um, and put that into part of your habits and make mm -hmm. it a thing that you do every single day. So yeah, habits have literally changed who we are. Yeah, and it, it takes a little while to tweak them. Like with diet stuff, I've tried a bunch. I figured out what works for me, what makes me feel good. And sometimes I just don't want to do it, so I go back to another one that works for me. So it's kind of a, it's a very much trial and <clears throat> error process. I guess I should keep, have been saying keep, routines, not habits. Yeah, keep it up. So Paul says, make it positive and easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make it sustainable. Don't be like, all right, I'm dropping everything and I'm going to work out five hours a day. Obviously, that's not going to work. And but Paul, Paul knows what he's talking about because Paul has been changing his routines like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Paul. And you, killing it. You, those before after pictures, you're looking good, bro. You're looking hot, man. You're looking good. <laughs> okay. I had to close the screen on my computer. I was like, Paul. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, all right. So here's a question. Do you have any tips or resources that will help a couple decide what type of marriage counselor or therapist to see? Are there any guidelines around interviewing your potential therapist to make sure they are a good fit? And even and is this even a thing? Background, my wife and I have decided to see a counselor, and frankly, we were overwhelmed by the number of different types and what was the right fit for us. So I appreciate that, Melon, you put all these notes there. No, but it says, just looking at one clinic near us, oh. the different practitioners had a crazy amount of alpha, alphabet soup behind their names. So we have oh, yeah. LMHC, so, ATR, ARMP. Yeah, don't, don't read them all. There's, there's a ton of credentials. I am a, a, an MS, Master's of Science, slash LMFT, which means Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist. And also, I'm an, M, of science. an e -M -M -H -S, Ethnic Minority Mental Health Specialist. So, I didn't even know yes, that. nobody knows those things unless you're in the field. And this is a very normal question. And to find a good therapist, you absolutely have to have 
rapport. There are several clinical research studies that show that if a couple or if an individual therapist does good in therapy, that therapist, therapist client rapport accounts to as much as 40%. So almost half of everything mean half of if this is a good fit or not means that we have a good relationship. Mm-hmm. You like which your means trust, therapist. there's rapport, there's similarities there. So if, if you don't have that, then good therapy may not happen for you. So it is of utmost importance. In fact, I do a presentation on how important the uh, client therapist relationship is. So sometimes it takes a couple of tries to find a good therapist. So don't be discouraged if the first, what? You're holding your microphone literally like this. Oh, sorry. Anyway, it takes a trial and error to find a good podcast partner too. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, what, I don't know, you totally sidetracked me. So let's see. Um, well, you talked about clinical therapist or therapist client relationships. And right. Don't be, this. don't be discouraged if, if the first two times you go to a therapist, they may seem weird or wacky, or you may hit it off just like that. If that's the case, then you're lucky, but don't let that get in to the way of you guys going and seeking therapy because it's it is but how do you important. start that's what they're asking so, and here's the things the things that i'm seeing stand mm-hmm. out is i see the word certified and licensed what's the difference okay um you well it, it's different for different states but what you want is a state licensed person so a licensed counselor licensed therapist licensed psychiatrist whatever i i suggest you go to a uh, licensed marriage and family therapist if you're doing if you're interested in doing couples work and most places you should just do a google search marriage counselors in my area they'll have individual websites read where they went to school where what they're about i would suggest that uh, people who go to non-online universities for master's degrees have a different level of education than an all online degree. I know that's controversial. Wait, say, say that a different way. Yeah, so if they went to school at like some school and you can look up the school that they went to, is it a brick and mortar school or is it an actual like, oh, I got my degree online? That's just a lower quality of, in my professional clinical opinion. That's a lower tier. An online education is not as high quality as a real school where someone is walking through a door and has a teacher. Yes. Okay. Brick and mortar. You just said anyway, like crazy town. <laughs> anyway, uh, you are sidetracking me so much today. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, let's see. So, yeah, you want a licensed person and just do sit down for an hour, look up a bunch of different therapists, see who looks nice, who has a great website, who's super professional, and has a good about them section. Do they have kids? Have they been married for a long time? Do they have experience in the field? I personally, I've, I've had a hard time finding my own counselor sometimes. So I understand the the uh, the difficulty with it. So licensed brick and mortar school. Look at their about section. Do they feel right? And well, you'll kind of know in your gut too. And I think too, it's important to know if you're looking for someone who deals with trauma, find someone who deals with trauma. Like if you mm-hmm. are, if you in your relationship are dealing with like, um, you know, we have medical family issues that are causing our relationship to have stress. That is a, a thing, and there are medical family therapists or whatever it is called. Mm-hmm. Tina, Dr. MDFT. Tina's one. Yep. And um, so you can look for a therapist when it's related to a specific thing, right? So that's one way to look. That's a good point, yeah. Trauma focused, do you want CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy? Do you want EMDR? What do you want? Or do you want like, oh, we're just having some relationship issues. Maybe Mm -hmm. you want to look up a um, certified Gottman therapist Mm -hmm. or a, I cannot think of the, emotionally focused therapy therapist. Um, Those are really good for couples therapy. So yeah, Yeah. email us and I can, uh, respond more. Yeah. Um, There's also another thing too, because like T- Dr. Tina does ASEX certification, mm-hmm. American Association of uh, Sex Educators, sex therapists, sex basically. therapists. Yeah. But so sh- that's certification, not licensing. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't mean it's bad though. So there's there's but lots you, of ways to figure it out. But, but you but... have to be licensed in order to be certified oh, in okay. certain things. Oh, okay. Right. Great. So yeah, and the other way too is that you can find counselors through other counselors' websites. Like Dr. Tina has one on uh, Northwest Institute on Intimacy, it says find a therapist. Like if you are looking for sex therapy, you can find mm-hmm. an ASEC certified therapist. You can so go that's... to Therapist Finder. I think it's therapistfinder.net mm-hmm. as well. Or Psychology Today. That'll give you a million things, and that's even overwhelming for yeah. me. So, but, yeah, but that's very, a really great question, yeah. and I think it's... Um, do people do like Yelp reviews? Are there reviews of therapists? I'm sure there are, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So maybe you could do that. I wonder if we have Yelp reviews. I think you have to be a business, which <laughs> we're kind of are. Okay. Hey, Seth and Melanie, just wondering if you guys have done a video regarding the topic of growing your family, i.e., what what to do when you can't agree with your spouse on the number of children you want. Is this something you two ever struggled with? I think it would be really helpful to hear how other couples have navigated this topic. It's causing my husband a lot, husband and I, a lot of tension lately. Uh, lately. <laughs> so, okay, I'll tell you this. The number of kids that you guys can't agree on isn't your problem. Oh, goodness. <laughs> You're going right for the jugular. It's, it's true. It's like, I want three, I want two. Oh. Well, that's not exactly okay. And true. I don't want to be insensitive to that, but I would want you guys to like, okay, what what is it? Does the husband have stress or the wife have stress about like, I don't want four kids. What it, it, it you know, is hard on my body. We can't afford it, all these things. Or are you looking like, well, I want more kids because that was my family of origin mm-hmm. and it makes me feel like whole or I've accomplished something, whatever. So, um, my, what? I don't know. It's not quite, I, maybe it's not quite as black and white as that. Because I do mm-hmm. think um, there is a level of like, sometimes you just have different opinions on different things, like where you live, where mm-hmm. you, what kind of home you want to live in. Actually, this is something that we're talking about right now because we're, we want to build a house. And that's going to take a really long time, and we have to figure out what kind of house we even want. And we don't have the same. We thought we were on the same page about it until it came like to actually picking a house we want, and like designs and different styles. And what Seth wants is really kind of not what I want. And so we're. What I would say is, remove yourself sort of one ring from the immediacy of the thing you're talking about. So it's not mm-hmm. like, well, I want this and you want that. So then what? Is go one ring beyond that and go, well, what is the factors behind him not wanting this house or mm-hmm. wanting this house? What are the factors behind me wanting more children or less? And let's examine the sort of non-emotional part of the conversation. Let's get out of the emotional state, examine it, make a pros and cons list. We mm-hmm. do that stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. I pull out whiteboards. We make lists. We go, if we do this, this is what happens. If we do this, this is what happens. That helps me feel sort of... Um, secure more secure Mm -hmm. in our choices even if it's not exactly what i wanted it helps me feel like oh i understand what he wanted so it's a matter of understanding one another understanding the motives understanding maybe the fear or the desire behind it Mm -hmm. and getting to the the root of it as opposed to just looking at like the trunk of like just how many kids that's kind of not the question it's what's below that um financially in the house you live in does it impact your other children do you have other children like those kinds of conversations need to be having happening in a, a healthy and productive way that is like life-giving and but also really addressing the kind of the deeper stuff there but it's not necessarily negative mm-hmm. I would like to see the use of the clearing structure mm-hmm. on this mm-hmm. when you say you don't want more kids I feel XYZ and then you go down the whole list when you say you want more kids I feel panicked you know not knowing what to do XYZ and I would use that around that so I think a lot of the things that you said would ring true in this situation the number of kids isn't the exact thing that's like the 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 forefront thing you know just like i want a log cabin well i want a scandinavian design house that's not the thing it's like well why do you want a log cabin well because it, it's homey and it feels well, comfortable let me, and warm yeah let me say that when you understand the why the what changes right when you understand like if your partner wants only like let's just say if we were talking about having another kid let's say seth is like i only want three kids but i'm like oh i really want four So why do I want four kids? Maybe it's because I I really love babies. I want to have a baby around and blah, 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 blah. But I'm not, maybe I'm not thinking about, well, they turn 10 one day Mm. and then they want a phone and then they get mad at you when they can't have a phone, right? And so, but maybe Seth is thinking, I don't want another child because that means this much health insurance costs or that, you know, he might have an entirely different, unrelated, not related at all to what I am thinking list going on in his mind. Mm -hmm. And once I understand his why, his what will feel different. And once he understands my why, my what will feel different mm-hmm. to him. Hello from sense. Western Australia. Hello. Hello. Let me see. Can I name two cities in Western Australia? Perth and Cairns. Cairns? Maybe? Cairns. I don't know. Corn? On the I don't know. So, um, but I did want to say, someone wrote, how do you feel about the apps for therapy? Okay, so therapy cannot be substituted by an app or you know books and stuff like that i do like the one uh, i can't remember the app's name but it's like you have access to a therapist that you can text back and forth that one Um, looks pretty cool there's also online therapy that i've been looking into recently to to do not to go through perth yes you wrote about perth yes (laughs) 
What about corn on the cob? Was he right about that one? I, that, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure about that one. Probably not even pronouncing it right. Anyway, on uh, therapy apps, like I think there's oh boy, I cannot think of the I can think of cities in Western Australia, but I can't think of an app that I, is more applicable to my life. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, yeah, I, I don't. I think they're good. It's not. It's definitely not a substitute for real therapy and for online therapy so that can be in support it's kind of like medication medication is good and it, medication even works better when it's uh, paired with real therapy but mm-hmm. medication alone without the therapy I would not advocate straight out mm-hmm. for just like this app I have lots of thoughts on that though if I can speak on that I would love to um, one it's your of the things show. that I that's right it is my show one of the things that I think of, about apps uh, specific and, and why I have a lot of passion about this is that we're developing an app right now that is essentially like a therapy based marriage app but it's not going to feel like it and one of the things that I don't think people realize is they go to therapy maybe once a week, maybe every other week, maybe once a month, mm-hmm. and they think that talking about the thing that's the problem is going to somehow make it go away. In some cases, if you're talking about trauma once a week with someone and it's a past trauma and you're just processing it, that can make it go away. But the thing that people don't realize is it's the behaviors literally every single day that kind of make up what happens after the counseling or uh, what happens with the processing of the trauma or with the relationship. So what is so amazing about the app concept is that you essentially have a per- like a therapy-based concept like um, the Gottman research saying the four horsemen of the apocalypse, like don't nag your partner or whatever. And you can have an app in your pocket that every day goes, bing, please don't nag your partner. So your therapist is not going to do that for you every day. Your therapist is not going to text you and remind you of the things you need help with. But apps can do that. And I think that's phenomenal. And that's why we're making our app. And I'm so ding-dang excited about it. And Seth is reading a text. He did not even care. What are you reading? <laughs> Seth. Seth. So on a way to <laughs> Karen's <laughs> on the other side of Australia. Okay. Well, hey, one out of two. Brad eight, says, eight, how eight. much does she pay you to be a guest on her show? <laughs> I like your style. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I don't pay him anything. Uh, let's see. So yes, that I do think that therapy apps are actually really helpful if you are, if you have the right mindset around it. It's mm-hmm. not going to fix your problems though. It mm-hmm. is not a therapist. That's a whole different thing. Yes, it's uh, it's an accoutrement to oh. real therapy, right? Okay. Uh, I think that was the last question that I. Oh, the last question. Day. Okay, oh, so here was oh. Go ahead. My, what I wanted to do, though, is I wanted to have you guys help me with a tagline challenge. So we need a tagline for Anatomy of Marriage. We used to say making sense of messy marriages, but then it was like, well, that was kind of like what season one was about, and I don't even know. Mm-hmm. So if you can think of a tagline for the podcast that we say in the introduction that helps people know what our show is about, please text it to us or email it to us, hello at anatomyofmarriage.com, or put it in the feeds right now so we can see it, because we need a tagline that like says what our show is, because I can't quite think of it. The best one that I came up with was what I said today. <laughs> Our show is a non-boring way to have relationships that don't suck. <laughs> well, we need a better tagline than that. Yeah, I agree. But thanks for trying. Anyway, we didn't do a prayer. We didn't share a past gratitude. So I am super thankful that you set up some stuff for us to go to an unbelievable, crazy ropes course. I am tonight. so excited about it. It's like it. a family ropes course. I want to read. It's going to be the thing about it. Really yeah. cool. And so, so I, we we are gonna do we are gonna do the high trek adventures and zip line in Everett, Everett, Washington, right? Mm-hmm. And so we're super excited. The kids don't even know about it yet, and I kind of like finagled this thing with a whatever it doesn't even matter. But we're gonna share it later. So hopefully, well, we got free you tickets see, to go. You will see us on Instagram and Facebook sharing our high ropes course adventure on high trek adventures and zip lines today. It should be awesome. Okay, you guys are awesome. Uh, let's let's pray. Thank you, Creator, for this time. Thank you for the blessings that you have given us. I pray that our listeners and couples find this to be helpful, as we do. I pray that we all do the hard work to uh, get through things and to make it out on the other side and be better for it. Amen. Amen. And, okay, remember to go to audibletrial.com forward slash anatomy of marriage for your free audiobook on us. It's a could be a twenty five dollar value, twenty dollar value. What we hit seven hundred reviews today. Yes, yes. Woo. So thank you for reviewing the podcast. If mm-hmm. you love what we're doing, if it's helpful for you at all, please rate and review it on iTunes. Thank you so much for seven hundred reviews. That is so 
flipping cool. It's rad. I love it so much. All right. Thanks, guys. You're awesome. Peace out. Catch you Monday morning. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you at our High Track Adventure Zipline Tours. All right. Bye. bye. Yeah. What's up, guys? Yeah, yeah. Post show. Think of the um, post show taglines. Yeah. We need help there. Think of the lines. We love you guys. Have an awesome Saturday. And catch you later. Bye.